This is your Wall Street wake-up call. Second quarter earnings season is on with Alcoa reporting financial results late yesterday. Earnings per share of 15 cents, topped estimates of 9 cents, also revenue of $5.3 billion, also eclipsed estimates. With me now from Chicago is Andrew Lane, an equity analyst with Morningstar. So Andrew, a beat on both the top and bottom lines, but revenue is down 10% year over year. What happened here? Yeah, and you know what? Yeah, it was an earnings beat this quarter, uh, so many are pleased about that. I would argue that results were a little m more disappointing when you, when you give them a firm look through. With regard to falling revenue, uh, we've certainly seen an ongoing environment for falling commodity prices. Uh, that really included aluminum and alumina through the first quarter. Saw a little bit of a rebound here in the second quarter, which, uh, which helped Alcoa a bit. Uh, but I think a key driver of the lower revenue year-on-year -year for Alcoa largely stemmed from somewhat disappointing results from the company's value-add operations. That's uh, the global rolled product segment, sort of a, a midstream operation that converts aluminum into finished goods, as well as the company's engineered products and solutions business uh, that has exposure to the aerospace end market. Results are a little bit soft for those two segments, in our opinion. And is there anything to say about its exposure to China and perhaps what that says about the global economy? Actually, I think uh, Alcoa's exposure to China was one of the few factors that actually led to the earnings beat. Uh, aluminum demand growth in China year-to-date through May actually increased 5.1% uh, based on our data. Uh, and that's actually a, a nice little rebound. We, we were looking for aluminum demand growth from China to be far lower. And we actually expect, only expect aluminum demand growth in China to be about 2% annually through 2020. I think the increased, uh, improved results from the first, uh, really the first half of the year in terms of, of Chinese commodity demand has largely been a function of stimulus, uh, not necessarily you know, improving economic growth environment organically for China, uh, but regardless, that Chinese, Chinese stimulus improved demand for aluminum, uh, which in turn drove aluminum and alumina prices higher. And I think really it was those upstream uh, segments and that upstream exposure that drove the earnings beat for Alcoa. Yeah, and stimulus out of China has certainly been a major theme so far this year. I also want to talk about Alcoa splitting up into two companies. The other one would be Arconic. Give us an update on how that's going. Yeah, Alcoa is uh, on track to split into two companies uh, by the end of the year. That's really all the detail we have at this point. Uh, the company hosted a, a, a conference call about 10, 11 days ago with their initial Form 10 filing, revealing some of the specifics uh, of the split. Uh, we're still waiting to see more details before we can really come up with a fair value for both individual companies. Uh, but by and large, uh, you know, we're, we're a bit concerned about the prospects of the upstream company, the upstream operations, which will retain the, uh, the legacy Alcoa name. Uh, we tend to have a below consensus aluminum price forecast over the long run uh, driven in, in turn by our below consensus outlook for Chinese aluminum demand. Uh, our long-term aluminum price is only about $1,440 per metric ton in real terms. That's roughly 12% below consensus and below current spot prices. Uh, so with our, our below consensus demand and, and price forecast, uh, we're concerned about the free cash flow generation that that, uh, that upstream Alcoa operation uh, will, will be able to generate in the coming years. We're a little bit more optimistic about the prospects of Arconic, yeah. uh, which is the new company uh, that'll house the, the, the downstream value-added operations. And more specifically, right. uh, we're, we're encouraged about the long-term prospects for the aerospace exposure for that, that company. And just quickly, Andrew, what do you make of the stock? Is it time to buy? Shares are up about 3% so far this year. Well, right now, we actually have the second lowest uh, fair value estimate on the street. So we have about an $8 per share uh, price target. Um, along those lines, you know, shares are, are up above $10 as of today. Uh, so we, we think they're trading at a bit of a premium relative to the intrinsic value of the company. And in short, uh, that, that below consensus price target or fair value uh, stems from our below consensus forecast for long-term aluminum prices. We think uh, the downstream value add story is pretty well understood by the market and largely priced into shares. Uh, but with some downside for the commodity exposed businesses, uh, the ultimate fair value of the stock is, is a bit lower than uh, than you know, many of our peers on the street like to think. All right, Andrew Lane from Morningstar, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.